Yeah, I think I think so. I mean, the guy the guy said that um, they're gonna use my videos and that, so I just assume so. So of lately, I've made a couple of videos. I ain't released them yet. They're on schedule. I made videos talking about like um, the transition, um, the transitioning from the streets to the workplace. So from the streets and prison to the workplace, because there is a transition. There is a transition. If you're a man, especially if you're of age as well, like 25 years old, you've never had a job ever in your life, or you've been on a road doing nonsense, you've been in and out of jail, you spent half a decade of your life in prison and that. For you to come out of the work, um, come off the streets and or jail and go to the workplace is a big transition in that. Even dealing with conflict in that. At work, if you want, you can use your fist, but I ain't going to get you nowhere. See, the certain man, They've only been on the streets and they've only learned how to talk to black men and that. And they know how to deal with men on the streets. But when you're in the workplace, you're dealing with white men. You're dealing with men that are not from the streets. They don't, maybe, maybe when they out on the street, they get up to fights and that. But in the workplace and that, you're going to need to learn how to articulate yourself and get your point across without flying off the handle and losing your temper. I had to learn that the hard way. When I first went into um, the workplace, so the first job I ever got was when I was 19. I was an apprentice at home to Haringey, yeah? And within the first four days, I fell out with a man because I felt like a man was trying to take the piss, make me carry all of his tools and that. And in the second week, I punched someone in the head because a man threw a piece of wood at me or threw a piece of wood at the crowd that I was with. And they thought it was a joke. I didn't find that to be a joke. So this is the thing. When you go into the workplace and that, you're going to be mixing and mingling with man that they don't flex the way that you flex. See, them man there think it's funny to throw a piece of wood at people. Them man there think it's funny. I know a Jamaican man, big man, yardy man. He went onto the construction site for the first time in the UK and he got kicked off the construction site the first day. Some white boy tried to put a broomstick up his ass. He turned around and he licked him. This is the thing. When you go into the workplace today, you're going to be mixing and mingling with man that don't flex the way you flex, irrespective of colour. Like I said earlier, when man see that Love Island program, I could have watched that program on mute so I don't hear what's coming out of the people them's mouth. So I can't really judge them and say, okay, this man's from this area and that this is the black man that I'm talking about. But I can tell the fact that them man they are touching other man's ass. The black brothers are doing it within themselves or with other white man. They're touching each other's ass or they're lying in bed with man cuddling up and that. I know you're not from the ends because there's no way you grow up around man them on the ends doing that nonsense. You go into different, this is what I've learned. You go into different environments and that, man are going to be flexing differently to you. What he might think is funny, you ain't going to think that's funny. A white person will um, call you a cunt and that. They think calling you a cunt is funny, you know. If you go onto a construction site, if you have the mentality, oh, anyone that calls me a cunt, I'm going to have a fight with them. You'll be having a fight 10 times a day, bro. You have to adapt to their foolishness. They think calling someone a cunt is funny. You're calling someone a pussy. I beg you go out on the street and call a black man a pussy see if they don't knock you out. Like, they think calling someone a cunt, calling someone a, a pussy is funny. It's not funny. You go into the world, you go into different environments, you will learn that you're going to have to adapt. And you, you're going to learn that this man don't flex the way that you flex. Even in jail. Watching one of them interviews and that, and one of the guys was on, I think, three man banger, or at least two man in the cell. And he's on the bottom bunk. And if any of you lot have slept on a bunk bed, like at home with your brothers and that, someone's at the top, someone's at the bottom, obviously. But you know, when man hang their legs over, he's saying that he's in the cell with a man and um, he's on the bottom bunk, a man's on the top bunk and he's hanging his legs over. And he said he didn't really like that, he, but he didn't really want to. And he's not a dickhead, but at the same time, you don't want to ruffle feathers over something minor but you don't like if you get what i'm trying to say even shit like that man flex like that certain man they'll take offense to that but move your fucking legs from my bunk my, my area and that. no it's like dealing with white man white man they they they're just different to us as well i don't know maybe it's me maybe it's me but i feel like white people don't like to give black people as much space like sorry White people don't like to give people as much space as black people do. White man, if a black man's talking to someone else, they, we like to keep a decent distance, more than arms length, you understand? 
white man, when they're chatting to you, they want to have a conversation and talk, like, up in your face and that, fam. Like, I, I don't get it, fam. Me, I like my personal space. But I've been fun. Blood, let me tell you something, fam. Let me tell you something, bro. You know how many jobs I've been fired from, bro? I even spoke about it in my book. I was saying that, like, when I... There was one year... What, I can't remember what year it was. I think it was 2017. I've been fired... From, I was fired from so many jobs. I actually worked it out. I worked out how many jobs I'd been to over the space of 10 months or something like that, or 12 months. And I worked out, oh, okay. Each job, I basically had a... A mortality rate of four and a half weeks. I'd last only about four and a half weeks at each job. Uh, getting fired from jobs because, get me, I don't flex the way the certain man flex. I know it's like, you see, like, like black people, yeah, and white people. I, I, I believe, because obviously, I ain't been in much establishments where there's a hierarchy of black people. So you've got black people at the top, in the middle, and at the bottom. So I can't observe it that much. But me just knowing my people, we don't, we don't function like that. For example, white man will be 30 years old and have an employee. Yeah, so a, a white manager will be 30, 30 something years old, will have an employee who's 50 years old. He'll be talking to him like he's a dickhead. He'll be talking to him like he's younger than him. No, no, no. Black man, man that I know, man then that's, that's like me. Even if we are all younger than the people who are inferior to us, i.e. I'm a manager, I'm a black man, I'm 30, almost 30. If I have an employee who works for me, if he's 50 years old, you're a bigger man for me. I ain't going to talk to you like no dickhead. Yeah, I'm in authority. I tell you what to do, but I tell you what to do with respect. Man have manners. White man don't think like that. White man, you're underneath me, you're a dickhead, blood. Unless you show me otherwise. I've had it before. I've, I've been an electrical tester and I have an electrician working with me. I basically tell him what to do. But I ain't. Get me in. <laughs> no, no, man, don't do that. You're a big man. You're, old, you're older than my mum, technically, by a few years. And that. You're a bigger man for me. Because outside of this stupid workplace, you're a bigger man for me. If I meet you out in the street or at a family function or whatever, a barbecue, you're a bigger man for me. So I must treat you with the same level of respect. White man don't think like that. No, I'm the boss and you're the employee. They will try and chat to you a certain way. Get me. I, 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 I know we're taught to respect elders. You see my neighbour, yeah, some old woman next door. Yeah, She's 75 years old. Maybe even 76 now, 77. There were some little white kids at the back of my house. Yeah, I think last year or so, the year before that, whatever, innit? Some white kids at the back of my house, they're like 10 years old. They were sticking their middle fingers up at the woman. They were calling her a pussy. I can never, no way, no way. Especially, she knows where they live, you know. So it's not like some random kids that live around the corner. No, she knows where these kids live, you know. She knows where they live. They know where she lives. There's no way. When I was a youth man, I would be on my estate and I'll be calling an older black woman who's a great grandma a fucking pussy. I call her a pussy, you know. Tell her shut up, bitch, and all them things. There, no way. Black children, we don't act like that. We do not act like that. There is no way on my estate, especially if I if if the woman knew where to find me as well. There's no way I'll be calling some black woman a bitch and rare, rare, rare and all that. Nah, no, nah, no way. No way. Because I know as soon as it comes back to my yard and, it, and that woman runs it back to my mum, I'm getting a slap around the head. I'll be grounded as well. My mum, you know what? I swear, my mum, maybe my stepdad would have probably said, you know what? Jelani's talking like that. Make him go and clean up the woman's driveway. You know what? That's exactly what my stepdad would have done. You know, Even, even me saying that, I said it exactly the same, the same way he would have said it. Make him go clean up her driveway. and that. If I ever, if, if a report back Report came back to my mum. I said, yeah, Jelani called this older black woman a pussy and that. As a local minor, nah. My mum and stepdad would have made me clean that woman's driveway. Literally. Literally. But yeah, it's a transition. Another transition as well from the streets and jail. 
to, to the workplace is the money. Like I said before, if you don't have no qualifications, nothing whatsoever, you literally was just a man on the boat. If you decide that you want to get a legit job, like you're going to be doing deliveries or working for Royal Mail and that, then you're going to be on 1300 a month. There's man I know that's earning 1300 pound a day. So imagine that. Imagine having to go to work for the best part of 22 days out of a month to earn 1300 when you know you could earn that in one day. To have to turn up to work for a specific time, leave at a specific time, to have to take orders from a man that might even be younger than you, talking to you mad at times just because he earns 50p per hour more than you. It's a big transition. It's a big transition. So that's why I made that video because I knew obviously there's going to be people in felt and watching my thing. I know I had to make that video because hopefully some of the money will come out of jail and, and get a job. They got to be prepared for the transition and that. Because one thing I was saying in that video is certain men, when they all they know is the streets and know how to deal with things with violence, because sometimes it's easier, you know, to deal with things with um, violence, and I'll get onto that in a sec. They won't know how to articulate themselves. So you know what? They'll just keep their mouth shut and then take abuse because they feel like, oh, I'm a black man in the workplace. I can't mess this up. The world is against me. You know how some of us black people think and that if I open up my mouth and I say the wrong thing because I can't use my fist, if I open up my mouth and say the wrong thing, then I'm going to get fired. But yeah, for me personally, I feel like it's easier to fly off the handle and get into a fight with someone, get into a physical fist fight with someone than actually talk to someone. Because the way man grew up as well on the road is that, bro, man never used to talk, bro. Man don't argue with people. That's why, like, I've had neighbours try to even talk to man, like, I'm like, what are you even talking to? But you know who man is, bro? I know you're not watching this, but I oh, yeah, dickhead YouTube, nah, trust me, blood. On road, in the real world, forget about YouTube, man, a different man. I don't mean that man go around bullying man or whatever, but what I'm saying, man, a different man out there. I don't play about. I don't play about on the street, bro. I don't play about on the street. But me personally, like, for some people, no, some people don't even like uh, confrontation uh, at all. But for me, I feel like it's easier for me to get into a fist fight than sit and talk, talk some problems out. For me, I don't like to talk because I feel like people don't hear. 